Thank As I mentioned, you. she is the founder and CEO of Delicious. Jackie, could you hand me a, let's see if we have a, if you haven't seen this brand, it's all over Whole Foods here in the UK. You, where it's else can you find uh, it? It's in Tesco in the UK, Costco, Morrison's, um, Ocado, part of Buy Women Built, which is amazing. And we just got a lot of great press from um, being a woman founder. Um, and Zap and some other other cucumbers. So yeah. go puff. So what is delicious? So delicious is a cookie dough platform. I started it because I'm a cookie dough addict. Love cookies, couldn't get enough. And when I moved to the UK in 2008, um, I just started playing around with um, cookie dough snacks for my fr my children's friends at school. And a friend of mine came to me and she's like, can you just make me a really good American style cookie? I'm like, yeah, that's so easy. So started um, it with making it a better for you product. So only oat flours, no refined sugars. At the time it was all coconut sugars. And, um, and then in 2014, I said, okay, I'm gonna take this a little further. So it's incorporated and, but just again, very small. 2017, I was like, all right, I'm putting this in the specialty fine food show. And it, um, it took off. I had incomings from Whole Foods, Planet Organic, and Avocado. So decided to start my own baby factory where I did everything myself, like whipping the mixer up and um, dispatching, and um, then grew into another small factory. And now we have a factory in Acton that's about 22,000 square feet. And um, we've just become the cookie dough experts. Delicious is called Delicious the London Dough Co which and when we launch into other countries, they love it. And they love British heritage. So they've always, are, it's very important that we keep that, um, that British heritage. And they were in dry ice. I see a lot of people like going, <laughs> so if you let them sit for a moment, they will thaw out and they'll just become really creamy. I saw Catherine being like, just hold on, yeah, folks. I was just, like, just take I a second. Like let it thaw for dry five ice, Dry ice is like, yes. it, it, I hold it in my hands because I'm so used to it, but but it does crazy things. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a good question. Why frozen? I mean, if your friends wanted an American-style cookie, you know, why is Delicious a frozen brand? Frozen because moderation, shelf life, um, I food waste. I didn't want food waste, so I thought in my that if I could do this and people could bake it on demand, that would be the best way for them to eat what they needed, not overeat, not throw it away. Um, I think food waste is out of control in this country. It's out of control everywhere in the world, uh, and it's a particularly bad problem in the United States. Uh, speaking of the United States, you know, you launched Delicious here in the UK uh, about seven years ago. Uh, you made your first foray into the United States in, was it uh, June of 2023? December of 2023, and it was a few Whole Foods stores. Yes, well, so we launched, uh, we, we, were, we were really lucky. The incoming CEO of Whole Foods came to the UK, and he decided to visit two factories. One was a farm, and one was our factory. So he came and um, saw the factory and said, I absolutely love it, we need it. I got a call two weeks later, and they started to fast track us. So we went into four regions in Whole Foods, and then in April, we launched nationwide. So now we're in all the Whole Foods, and it's been really crazy, really hard, um, a lot of money, a lot of time. Uh, and the, the problem is we, we manufacture everything here, so we container it over. And it gets there, it's beautiful, it's fantastic, but the problem is getting it across all of the US. So it lands in Philly, and I don't think we ever realized how difficult it would be working with UNFI and moving product across the U.S. So, you know, you could have said no to the Whole Foods CEO. I don't say no very easily. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm a yes person. I'm always like, okay, yeah. And then I figure out how to do it. Like, I don't think I ever say mm, no. Well, as you mentioned, the logistics are tough. You had to raise a ton of money. Um, just managing a frozen operation on its own is, a, is pretty tedious. Um, you know, how did you take everything into account when you were making that decision? Well, I think being an American, I felt like it was in my blood to go across the pond and it was going to happen, whether it happened now, next year, two years from now. So I guess the saying is, you know, you just rip the Band-Aid off and you go for it. And I would figure out how I was going to pay for it later. And um, we've, we've had a great 
adventure. We launched in Target yesterday. Congratulations. So, which is huge. Thank you. And, you're t and not just Target. Target nationally in yes, the United States. Yes, Target nationally. So we're in 500 stores, and then we launch in just under 3,000 in February. So that's really, really cool. And, um, and then um, Independence and Fresh Direct, which is in the um, New York area, and Harris Teeter, which is North Carolina area. I don't know if anybody knows some of these other stores. So it's, it's been a really, really fantastic adventure. And again, we're focusing with our gelato bites. So in the UK, we're, we have our ready-to-bake cookie dough, and we just launched a line um, on train lines of baked cookies, but only in the US and um, in some other countries, we focus on just the cookie dough and gelato bites. This might sound like a strange question, but did Whole Foods have a bit more confidence in you as a founder and being able to deliver because you already knew the American market and could probably get around relatively easily? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I knew Whole Foods and I knew, Ky but I'm from Miami, Florida, so I lived on that, that little part of the US that sticks down there. No, I just think that they, it helped that there was nothing like it in the US. And they saw the snackability of it and they saw the growth in frozen snackable products. So we were just on the trend. We had won an innovation award with Mint Mintel in 2022. And um, so they thought, you know, this is unique. This is um, something that people can, can grasp and eat and snack on all day. So there was a life to it. When you were thinking about the national rollout at Whole Foods, was that something that was always in the back of your mind as we're going to prepare ourselves to be ready for a national rollout? Was it um, performance-based or how did you have those conversations with the company? Um, that was just the plan. So they, we gave them exclusivity through and June 30th and it was part of the plan that we would go four months or yeah, four months, um, well, four, no, four regions through April and then nationally. I'm going to ask a question that Jack and I talked about a little bit earlier, which is category, uh, related to category. I mean, obviously, you're selling a food. It's a very different kind of food than, you know, what we've seen. As you mentioned, Whole Foods had never seen a product like yours. Um, do you think that the category mattered as much as your product and the brand? And the fact that you're selling a novelty, a frozen novelty product and not something like a sparkling water, per se? Um, probably, probably. I think that that's, it was much more of a, a, the category wasn't as huge. I, I, drinks are hard. I've seen a lot of drinks brands and I think it's, um, Frozen's hard too, but I think a cookie dough wrapped around gelato is what made us definitely enter the category and create a new, a new part of the category, the frozen snacking category. Whole Foods and Target, a lot of people shop at both stores, but I feel like they're very different beasts mm -hmm. in terms of how you're successful in each one. Mm -hmm. uh, merchandising is tough because there's just more products at a Target. Um, sometimes the category management isn't as good as it is at places like Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure that you get off to a, ro a really good start at Target such that you're ready for that very large rollout in February? Mm -hmm. So I think just creating a great promotional plan and that's what they want to see because the most important thing that they're looking for in the US is rotation. So we have to create that vibe and that rotation to make sure that we're going to stay on shelf. And um, what we've seen is, I mean, we can create amazing socials. We can get the word out there by um, different media. But again, it's the customer. So creating those in-store banners, the, the discounts, that, that's what's going to drive the velocity. It's kind of hard when you're operating here in London. Uh, do you have a team already out there in the U.S.? We have um, we have one person. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of scary, but he's a multitasker, and um, and we're looking to <laughs> a real multitasker. <laughs> Why is everyone laughing? I'm kind of curious. Do you, do you not believe, Catherine? <laughs> um, hey, it's the American way, right? Do it all. <laughs> uh, so the mothership is here, and we have a lot of support. And he couldn't do it without the support of the team here. So we have a marketing and. Um, small sales, sales team here. I mean, we're quite small, but we're scrappy. We are very scrappy. What would you say is the most important part of getting your operations right in the US? I mean, you talked about the importance of 
social marketing and promotion, but you know, someone who's skilled in operations might not be the best marketer. Someone who's great at sales might be not be the best back of the house person. So how do you get someone comfortable with being a jack of all trades? Um, find somebody like our guy that's, <laughs> that's done it all. He's grown companies. He basically found um, small companies and helped them find manufacturing facilities to the right marketing people. So just, um, we're, we're very lucky. I think that Delicious has, has had a lot of luck and it's been a lot of hard work. I'm about 80 years old now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really hard. If there's one or two things that you could talk about as the most challenging aspects of the United States market, uh, such that you know, folks here will understand where not to trip up, what would those things be? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think the hardest part is the logistics. Like I said, it's, it's um, and depending on who you go with, when you go direct, so I, I say that, but with Target, we haven't had any problems. We've, uh, everything ends in store. But it was just, you have to be involved. You can't expect things to happen. Um, you have to just pay attention to everything, be really micromanage. You know, none of us want to micromanage, but I think micromanaging is, is something that, it's, not, it's just not, not going to happen by itself. We're pretty much out of time, but I do want to talk about relationships with distributors. As you mentioned, mm -hmm. UNFI, there's KHE. These are humongous natural product distributors. Um, I think there's a tendency to think that they are a part of your team that may not necessarily be the case, and you have to manage them as well as you manage anything. How do you manage your distributors well in the United States? Um, well, we, we've probably done what we just, the only thing we knew how to do was hiring um, Whole Brain, which is a company in the US that helps you facilitate all the pickups. They're a broker, essentially. Yeah, broker, broker, what would you call them, Russell, in the US? An agent. an agent. So they're an agent. So they help watch everything, make sure that everything's picked up. But again, they have to be managed. And as you know, managing people in a team is, is just a whole nother level and um, takes a lot of time. But I think just being, again, micromanaging, making sure that everything's happening and um, following through because nobody's going to treat your business like you have, like you do. So the agents are great, but they're not your team. And it's too expensive for us to have a whole team. So we have the one guy. <laughs> uh, I wish we could talk all night, but I'm, there's a lot more networking to happen tonight. And I'm so excited. There's so many people are here. I'm so excited that people brought their own products as well. I, s I strongly suggest you try some delicious. There's also some humanity. There's feisty soda. I can't read because my eyes are going. There's some Tenzing over there. But please come over to the table and try a few things if you're here. Um, and definitely get in touch with Catherine and Jack on LinkedIn. Uh, you, you guys will be able to answer a couple questions here and there in case somebody has a follow-up, yes? Absolutely. Fantastic. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much to, for everyone coming out tonight. And I can't believe I forgot to mention, thank you so, so much to Lucky Saint. Uh, you know, the team has been so gracious and so wonderful in having us here. Thank you so much, Luke, and thank you again to your incredible team. It has been amazing throughout the day. Appreciate it. All right. That wraps up the interview portion of our meetup tonight. Please enjoy the rest of the evening, and uh, I'll be mingling around. Make sure to download Taste Radio on your listening platform of choice. See you soon. Thanks. Thanks.